Here is the old chassis in all of its zip-tied glory. This chassis is gonna be replaced in this video. I designed a new chassis in Fusion 360 that would be lighter, more rigid, more expandable, and more balanced. It's designed around one inch by one inch square tubing, so I picked up the exact amount I needed from the Home Depot before marking and cutting it to size. So as you can see, my cuts weren't all that great. I think I'll have to trim this left one down. Hopefully I'll be able to weld this so that this won't be an issue. After I got the tubing around the right length, I positioned the layout for the metal. All right, so everything is in position and we can begin welding. All right, so everything is together. Track welds are on. So if we take a look at the job, I'd say it's pretty good. I've got this leveler and uh, it seems to be telling me that it's pretty much perfect. Now that everything had been tack welded, I marked the tubing at an angle that would allow the back wheel to slip in more easily. This is how I held the metal down to cut it. I'd rate it a five out of seven if you're flexible, but like a two out of seven if you aren't. All right, so what I've just done is made the cutoff so that we can slip the back wheel into these little notches. Next, we gotta drill the holes in these sides. After I drilled the holes, I cut from the edge of the metal to the holes so that the axle could slide in. So the axle is actually too wide to fit in the slots. So what I'm gonna do about it is I'm gonna flip this so that this is pointing in the same direction as this, which will make it look awkward, but it'll be good. I managed to break the tack welds and re-weld the left tube, just rotate it 180 degrees, which allowed for enough clearance for the back wheel. Oh, awesome. Awesome. All right, so it is doing a pretty good job of staying in place. And I'm pretty happy with it. I needed to salvage a few components from the old chassis, so I first removed all the electronics as well as the front wheel in order to prevent damage while grinding. We're gonna remove the handlebars first. Uh, you can actually see how bent up this piece of angle metal is. I'm hoping that the box tube that we have now will be much stronger. I began by grinding down the welds that held the handlebar stem to the chassis before finishing up the job with a cutting wheel. and I didn't break a blade this time. <laughs> now that I've separated the front from the back, now it's time to get off this dang motor mount. Okay. Nice. Honestly, that was easier than I expected. After ensuring proper alignment, I tack welded the handlebars to the new chassis. Unfortunately, I got so caught up in aligning that I didn't think about whether I was welding the handlebars to the top or to the bottom of the chassis. And I remember thinking that it might make a difference doing it like this, and it does. It means this wheel has to go on this way. It has to be facing upward uh, when I put it in like this, because this is the only way it fits, because the sprocket will hit one of the pegs down here. I can't really have it this way though, because the motor is gonna be turning this wheel this way and it doesn't go because that is the slack way. Like, uh, it's basically on backwards. You can only drive it by turning it this way right now. And according to how I welded the front, it would be going backwards. A bit of grinding later and I had the handlebars free again.
I re-insured proper alignment, this time double checking that the chassis was right side up and tack welded it on. I took extensive measurements of the motor shaft to ensure that the front and back sprockets would align. I then welded the motor mount to the chassis. I mounted the wheels, as you can see, and I've also mounted literally everything else. Funnily enough, the chain fits on this new mount, but it's very tight. So it's probably doing a number on this motor's bearings, uh, but I really just want to test it. Eight zip ties later, and I'm actually ready to ride this. All right, it's 4.40 a.m., 4.41, <laughs> and... We're gonna test this, so in goes the key. Let's twist it, and it lights up. Let's go. Let's go for a ride. I am so excited right now. Oh my gosh, it feels so much better now. The square tubing made the chassis much more rigid, and the two mounting points for the back wheel eliminated all the wobble. It was much easier to ride, however there was another rhythmic clicking. It could have been due to the chain's tension, but I'd been working on the scooter for nearly 10 hours straight up to this point, and I really didn't bother looking into it too much. Uh, this truck right here. Whoa. Whoo! Nearly ate it. In the next episode, I'll be redoing the battery pack and doing some acceleration tests. Thank you for watching, and I'm gonna go to bed.